Okay, and welcome back everyone who's taking the math for business and finance and math applications. And I'm doing the chapter 11 drill problems, the odd number problems. And like I said, um, I'm doing these off the cuff, ad hoc. I mean, just as if I was a student. And what I didn't realize is, is that I only had one more question left um, to do out of the assigned problems. And uh, so... This is going to be a pretty short video. Right? So, uh, number 11. Right, calculate the effective rate of interest to the nearest hundredth percent of the following treasury bill. I'm given $10,000 treasury bill, 4% for 13 weeks. Okay. So, um, when we're talking about weeks, and remember, 4% um, is annual, so weeks, there's 52 weeks in a year. Okay. Um, we have to keep our time frames all the same. So first we need to calculate how much interest. So and again, that's interest is equal to face value times rate times time. So I have 10,000 times 4% or 0 0.04 times 13 weeks over 52. Oops, 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year. Okay. So do the math, 10,000 times 0.04 times 13 gives me 5,200. And that's over 52. So divide that into that and you end up with $100. Okay. So um, now we have to take the 10,000 and subtract the $100 and we end up with 9,900, okay, and so for our effective rate, we have, remember for the effective rate, we have the interest over the uh, proceeds times the time, right, rate, interest, principal, time, remember how we we look at that formula you don't have to be memorizing it okay let me erase that and point it out to you okay interest is equal to principal times rate times time well principal we had been calling face value now we can also call it our proceeds right rate and time okay well rate can you know is not just uh you know an interest rate, it can also be an effective rate. So we take, and since we want to find out what our rate is, so our rate is equal to, and like I said, in the numerator, we put the interest, and then whatever's left, we put in the denominator. Okay, so that's our formula. And then to figure it out, we set the interest, we know that's 100, and our proceeds were 9,900, and our time is the 13 weeks over 52. So to do the math, let me erase this over here. To do the math, we have 100, and we do everything that's in the denominator first. So. 9,900 9, times 13 gives us 128,700 over 52. So that's 100 over, and we divide the 128,700 divided by 52, and we end up with 2,475. 2, so we divide 100 divided by 2,475 and we end up with an effective rate of um, 0 0.0404. And of course, that's a decimal, and to convert it into a percentage, we move the decimal two places to the right, so 4.04%. Okay, and that's it for this problem. And that's kind of, um, uh, you can stop here, but I'm going to take just a couple of minutes and go over it and maybe make it a little cleaner here if you didn't get that. Come on. 
erase all of this. Like watching me erase stuff. Okay, go ahead and pause the video or stop if you want. But if you need the the quick summary here, here's the summary. Okay, so you know the first thing we have to do is find the interest. Principal times rate times time, um, and then again the thing to pay attention to, my principal you know can can equal a face value and it can equal proceeds. My rate is not just an interest rate, but it can be an effective, called an effective rate, which is still an interest rate. Okay, it's still a percentage. So even though different, termino different terminology is being used, it's still based upon the same concept, right? And if you have that concept, you don't, and you understand the concept, uh, you don't need to be memorizing everything. Okay, if you try to memorize everything, you're just going to keep on getting yourself more and more confused because there's, you know, as the you're exposed to different terminology, you're basically just rememorizing everything over and over and over again, changing this one little and changing that one little, and you know, if you happen to forget it, you're dead in the water. Whereas if you understand the concept, interest is equal to principal times rate times time, you can manipulate that and always be right. So we need to find the interest on this treasury bill. So we had 10,000 times 4% times 13 weeks. And since there's 13 week, uh, since this is weekly, there's 52 weeks in the year. So our denominator now becomes 52, not 360 for ordinary interest, not 365 for exact interest, and not 12 for 12 months. Okay, this is weekly, right? This is weekly. This is daily, and of course, this is monthly. Keep your time frame correct. Okay. But the time frame is always going to be related to one year. I mean, 52 weeks in a year, 365 days in a year, 12 months in a year. And the reason why it's yearly is because the interest rate is expressed as an annual interest rate. Okay. So when we did the math here, we ended up with um, $100. Okay. I'm not going to redo the math. It's 10,000 times 4% times 13. And that'll be in our numerator, and then you divide it by 52. Uh, I believe so quickly I can just mentally do that. And that means in the numerator we had 5,200, 10,000 times 4% times 13. And then the denominator, 52, which gave us $100 in interest. So our proceeds would be 10,000 less the $100 gives us $9,900 in proceeds. Okay. Now, our effective rate. So I'm uh, let me just write this up here. Interest is 100, and our proceeds are 9,900. Okay. And now, in order to get the effective rate, okay, well, let's just manipulate the formula. We want to figure out the rate. And like I had said, we always put the interest in the numerator and whatever is left over, which in this case here is principal and time, principal times time, proceeds times time. And so our interest was 100. Our proceeds were 9,900. 9, and our time is 13 over 52. Okay. So now in doing the uh, doing the math here, okay, um, we have to do what's in the denominator first. Okay, so I have 100 in the numerator. And when I take and I work on what's in the denominator, and the reason why I have to do that is because I have a fraction here. I take the 9900 times the 13, which gave me 128,700, and that's over. 52. 
Okay. So since we still have a fraction in the denominator, right, we still have to do the math. So that's 100 over 2,475. Okay, now we can work with this fraction and divide 100 by 2,475. And we end up with the decimal 0 0.0404. 0 0.0404 doesn't matter. Um, and since it's a decimal and we want to know what the percentage is, we move the decimal place two to the right. And we end up with 4.04%. Okay? And that's our effective rate. So I hope you understood that. And now we'll move on to the word problems.